Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at a CPA exam simulation or an exercise that you might see in an intermediate accounting, advanced accounting. Most likely it will be an advanced accounting, but it, you could also see it in intermediate and surely on the CPA exam. What's the topic? How to account for the investment using fair value or the equity method. Those are two methods you need to be familiar with. So we're going to look at an example. We're going to treat the example as if we are using the fair value method. Then we would look at the same example and how do we handle this example if we're using the equity method. So let's go ahead and look at the data. On January 1st, 4th, X1, Adam paid 340 million for 10 million shares of Maggie's company's stock. So Adam purchased Maggie's stock. This investment represent 30% interest in the net asset of Maggie and gave Adam the ability to exercise significant influence over Maggie's operation. Great. 30%. What does that mean? It means if you want to, you can use the equity method because it's more than 20 to 25%. 30% is more. However, Adam choose the fair value method to account for this investment. Therefore, we're going to assume first that Adam choose, chooses the fair value because you can, you have the option to choose the fair value. And we're, first, we're going to look at it as if Adam chooses the fair value. Then we would look at it if Adam chooses the equity method. What happened is Adam received dividend of two point six dollar two dollars and sixty cent per share on december 15 and maggie reported 230 million for the year ended x1 okay so far so good the market value of common stock as of december 31st for maggie was 32 dollars now 32 dollars let, let me just show you something real quick we bought it for uh, we purchased 340 million divided by 10 million shares. When we bought the shares, it was 34. By the end of the year, the share is $32. On purchase date, the book value of Maggie's net identifiable asset was 880 million. What's the net asset book value? It means assets minus liabilities on, based on book basis equal to net asset of 820 million. That's the net asset. However, the fair value of Maggie's depreciable asset with an average remaining life of four years exceeds their book value by 120 million. So if we add 120 million, we're up to 1 billion in asset. What does that mean? It means when we purchase the company, there is an additional 120 million in fair value and access of book value. And those 120 million were part of their depreciable asset and that's usually the case if you own a building warehouse then they might go up in value because you purchased them a while ago so what we did is we were going to have to account for those later because if we are adding because when we buy their asset we're going to add this additional 120 million to the consolidated statement and as a result it's going to increase our depreciation why because this 120 million that's access asset value because we report this at asset value the remaining the remainder of the access of the cost over book value for the net asset purchase was attributed to goodwill we don't have to worry about this but something you want to worry about if you're studying advanced accounting will go into any remainder will go into goodwill but we don't have to worry about this in this example so this is what we are giving the first thing we're going to have to do is account for this investment using the fair value. So prepare all appropriate journal entries related to the investment during X1, assuming Adam accounts for this investment under the fair value and accounts for Maggie's investment in a similar to what should, what it would use for securities for which there is no significant influence. So we're going to assume there is no significant influence. We're using the fair value and compute the effect on net income and the amount at which the investment is carried on the balance sheet as of the end of the year. So we have to do two things. Look at all the journal entries, then determine the net effect on income and net effect on the balance sheet. So this this could be giving in a form of a simulation on the CPA exam. So we're going to go ahead and first look at this problem from a fair value perspective. Look at all the journal entries and what's the effect of income what's the effect on income which is the income statement and what's the effect on the balance sheet which is the investment then we will proceed change the scenario and rather than the fair value we would look at this investment using the equity method let's go ahead and get started 
Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The first thing we're gonna do is purchase the investment. On January 4th, Adam Bakery paid 340 million for 10 million shares of Maggie's common stock. Great. We debit investment and equity securities 340 million, credit cash 340 million. That's the original purchase. We purchased the investment and that's how we purchased it. The investment represents 30% in the net asset of Maggie's and gave Adam the ability to exercise significant influence. Okay, we already know this. Adam chooses the fair value, which we're going to be accounting for this here. Adam received $2.60 per share on December 15, X1. Maggie reported net income of $230 million for the year end December 31st, X1. Now, we need to know if we're using the fair value, we don't care about the net income because we are not reporting our investment based on net income. We're reporting the investment based on fair value. Therefore, we ignore this. Therefore, there's nothing for the $230 million. Do we have to report the $2.60 per share dividend? Of course we do. We have 10 million shares. If we multiply this by $2.60, we're going to get cash dividend of $26 million. So we are going to debit cash. 26 million credit dividend revenue 26 million so now what we did is we accounted for the dividend we don't have to worry about net income so net income if we're using the fair value is not used to adjust our investment the market value of maggie's common stock as of december 31st was 32 million uh, 32 dollar per share 32 dollar per share times 10 million shares, it's 320 million. What does that mean? It means by the time we got to the end of the year, the investment account should be written down by how much? By $2 per share. Remember what I told you, we purchased 340 million, we paid 340 million and we purchased 10 million shares. Therefore, the price per share when we purchased them was 34. Now the price is 32. Therefore, we are at a loss of $2 times 10 million shares. What we do is we debit loss on investment, unrealized goes to net income, and we credit fair value. Simply crediting the fair value would reduce the investment account from, so if we're looking at a T account here, if this is an investment account, originally we have 340 million, then we have fair value and we credit fair value 20. Therefore, on the balance sheet, it goes like 340 minus 20. The investment is reported at 320, which is what it should be at $32 times 10 million shares. Now, we prepared all the journal entries. Now, the question is, what's the effect on income? What's the effect on income? Let's see. The effect on income is this. We reported dividend revenue, that's income, revenue is income. Then we reported a loss of 20 million. 20 minus 26 of revenue, 20 million of loss. The effect on income is 6 million. What's the investment? The investment is 320 million. This is the investment, that's the effect on the balance sheet. On the balance sheet, at the end of the day, the investment is worth 320 million. Now we're going to look at the same exercise except. They ask you using the equity method. Now, how does the equity method work? The equity method works, you would increase your investment and you would reduce your investment in proportion to the income and dividend What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources exercises, lectures that's going to help you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA exam candidate, CMA candidate. The best thing you can do is invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.